Just looking at these means in a table doesn't show the effects as clearly as if we plot them. So let's develop right now the factorial plot, a typical way to look at data when we're dealing with factorial experiments. To start, I'll put an x-axis. In this case, I'll use the time factor as the x-axis, and as separate lines, I'll use the different routes. So let me draw in the lines here, and I'll even add back in the means for each of the different combinations. So we have for Gilman Drive, the mean duration it took at 8 a.m. and the mean duration at 9.30. And at 8 a.m. for La Jolla Village Drive, we have the mean duration it took and at 9.30, the mean duration. So these are the same data we showed before in the table, but now it'll be a little easier for us to actually see each of these possible tests. That is the overall effective route, time, and the combination of the two. Let's start with the overall effective route, ignoring time. Now what we're really saying here is what is the overall difference between the routes? Now a handy way to look at this in a factorial plot is simply to take the midpoint of each of the lines. Notice that time of day is our x-axis. So if we're ignoring time of day, the midpoint in each of these lines is simply the average of the two different time points. That is, if I ignore time, and here it is ignoring time, we can see that La Jolla Village Drive had a longer duration on average than Gilman Drive. This is literally the effective route ignoring time. Okay, we've done the first test. Let's look at the overall effect of time ignoring route. So using our factorial plot again, let's see what it would look like to ignore route. In this case, that's ignoring the separate lines. So what we're really doing is looking at what the overall time duration is at 8 a.m. There it is, the midpoint between the two different routes at 8 a.m. And the overall time it took to get to campus at 9.30. That's just the midpoint between those two lines at 9.30. Let me connect these two points with a line, and here we have the plot of the effect of time ignoring route. And looking at this, we can see that it was a little bit faster to get to campus at 9.30 than at 8 a.m., but it's not a huge effect. In fact, it's only a little bit faster to go at 9.30 than 8 a.m. on average, or said differently, ignoring route. So far, we've seen the data that would contribute to those first two tests. What about that third test, the effect of the specific route and time combination? And I'll say this differently below. The degree to which the effect of one factor depends on the level of the other factor. Specifically, can we describe the effect of one factor independent of the other factor? Now, this is most easily seen by looking at the factorial plot. And let's start by ignoring La Jolla Village Drive altogether. Let's simply look at Gilman Drive. Now, if I were to describe the effect of time of day and I had only observed Gilman Drive, I would actually say that the effect of time of day is to take longer if I go at 9.30 versus 8 a.m. Notice why that's the case. On average, it actually took a few more seconds to get to campus on average at 9.30 in the morning versus 8 in the morning. Now, let's look at the effect of time of day at La Jolla Village Drive. Notice in this case, the effect of time of day is different. In this case, it's actually faster to get to campus if I go at 9.30 than if I were to go at 8. These are the data. This is the actual effect that will enter in to that final test. And this, in factorial designs, is known as an interaction. So the interaction between factors is the degree to which the effects of one factor depend on the level of the other factor. Now let me pause for a second and talk about the word depend in this context. We don't mean it to mean causally depend. I'm not really saying that the time of day is causing one route to be faster or slower, or one route is causing a time of day to be faster or slower. I simply mean in our rhetoric about a term, or our description statistically, we can't describe one effect independent of the level we're talking about of the other effect. And specifically, we saw this because when I'm talking about the effect of time with Gilman Drive, I actually have to say that as I go later in the day, it takes longer. But for La Jolla Village Drive, going later in the day means I get there faster. Notice that the effect of time depends, not causally, but statistically in this case, on which level of route I'm discussing. 
Now, another way to do this is talking about the effect of route at the different times of day. That is actually statistically analogous to talking about the effect of time at the different routes. For instance, what's the effect of route at 8 a.m.? Well, there's actually a very large difference between these two different routes when I'm at 8 a.m. That is, it takes much longer to go La Jolla Village Drive than to go on Gilman. But if we're going at 9.30, well, the effect of route is actually smaller. That is, the difference between 764 and 686 is actually less than the difference between 845 and 670. So the effect of route depends on which level of time of day I'm in in the same way that the effect of time of day depends on which route I'm considering. So this final test will really be a test about how much we have to refer to the level of one factor when describing the effect of the other factor. That is, is there some interaction between factors? Does one factor's effect depend on which level we're in of the other factor? And this test, as it turns out, is one very important reason to do a factorial design because there are times when we have very specific reasons to question whether one factor's effect depends on the level of another factor. Being able to find an interaction statistically may tell us something very interesting about the world.